Greetings and welcome to Weltmeister Wednesdays. Tonight's broadcast features an exceptional episode recorded live at the Pantanal event in Berlin this past weekend. The festival's overarching theme centers around the dream of peace. Radu Ratoy, a skilled accordionist hailing from Moldova and Romania, boasts an impressive record of achievements, having clinched over 30 victories in national, international, and global competitions, including prestigious events like the Trophy in Coupe Mondial in Castel Fidaro and Klingenthal. Tonight, he joins Waltmeister Accordion CEO, Mr. Frank Meltke, in an exclusive interview. Please welcome Radu Ratoy. Radu, nice to have you with us. It's quite uh, impressive to have you with Weltmeister Wednesday. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your really impressive history? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Radu, as you know, and uh, I'm very happy to be here with, uh, in this show. It's, uh, Weltmeister is a really important name in my, in my history because I played, I think, eight, nine years Weltmeister. Um, yeah, my, my trip started at six years old uh, from, uh, from Moldova. I learned in a music school and after a, a high school of music and after I went to Copenhagen uh, for a degree, ma for bachelor or a master degree. Um, my trip started uh, very, actually very funny with a neighbor which played piano and I went to music school. <laughs> they said, I'm not enough talented and they say, Maybe we can give you the accordion, not a piano. So <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was somehow my destiny. And uh, yeah, I played more than ten instruments, but accordion was my favorite. Um, so your neighbor, by end of the day, is responsible for your career. <laughs> exactly. He was he was playing like on not really a piano, but an electric piano in some weddings, some events, some bars. Uh, he even took me a few times to, to a bar which was very near to our house. He was playing there, I was drinking juice for free. <laughs> I was very happy and I said, okay, maybe, maybe this is what I want for life. <laughs> Interesting. Um, do you have a role model for uh, your career? Uh, my idea is to be original, to, to try things which I feel. I, I, of course, look somehow on what people are is doing and I see big names. And I kind of tried to follow, but I always try to find my path and I, uh, I go on my feelings a lot. So if I feel I want to be here, I will be. If I don't feel, even if a lot of people say me it's a good thing to do, I will just not do it because I don't feel. So I'm very much feeling guy. <laughs> I think that's very important for a, a musician to be uh, itself and not to be uh, driven by other people. Absolutely. That's, that's what... That means Radu and uh, somebody else will be another person and I don't have, we don't have to repeat each other or we don't have to look. Maybe it's nice to listen, for example, I listen to a lot of musicians, it's, but I don't really copy or I just listen for my perspective or for my musical background, like to have a more ideas or more, more things to, to, not to copy, but just to see how people are doing. But in the end, I just have to feel the music or I have to feel the idea or the, what I want to do. Are you reading notes or do you play uh, without uh, any uh, notes? Or how do you feel or how do you express what you feel? Oh, for example, when I work uh, the pieces, I write a lot in the scores. I, I love to write because it it's kind of gives me the, the idea of what I want. But at, in the concert, when I go on stage, I kind of forget everything <laughs> and uh, I do what I really feel in that moment. So uh, I think it's very good to have this fundamental thing, work, in the, work before the stage, but on stage you just go and you are free and you do what you really feel there. But of course, this, you have to reach that moment when you can just go on stage and just be yourself. <laughs> to be on stage and um, feeling yourself is a, a good point. Uh, regards competition. You did uh, more than 60 competitions in the past few years, which is quite impressive. 
yeah, competition for me was not something to, to I don't know, to, to win or it was not like that for me. For me, it was like to discover the world, to discover how to play, to be better. That was the idea. And I, coming from Moldova, Moldova is a very closed country, unfortunately. Now it's much better than in my like seven, eight years ago. And now people are, are going abroad a lot and we have this change of experience. And But before it was very closed. And for example, all the pieces which I played, almost all the pieces which I played in high school were first time performed in Moldova. So it was it was really hard. And the competition competition festivals abroad were the only chance to get out of the country to see what's the level, where I can go. Because it's not just important to work. You need to know how to work and where you want to go, or where you want to reach, where how you want to be. And the competition were exactly what I needed to to, to see myself what I want. Okay.
Uh, we talked a little bit about it, that you express your feelings when you perform. How do you describe your style of music? Because I've seen classical, I have seen some not so classical music <laughs> from you, so it's very interesting. Oh, my goal was always to play everything, to play all the styles, to, to understand how to play. Uh, from classical music to the contemporary music, from variety to jazz, like for me, music doesn't just stop in one uh, one type of music. It's music. It's everything. So I wanted at least to to see. We say how to eat the bread <laughs> in uh, in each style. So to see each style what consists of, how to play correctly, and not only correctly, and how to feel each style. But after I just decided for myself what I like more, what I feel I'm better in, what I feel I want to do. 
because for example uh, yeah for me classical music is just what i feel what i like like i wake up in the morning and i really want to practice it's i really want to see to discover to improve myself and i think classical music it's exactly what i what i need and also the word difficult hard and impossible it's where my favorite words so that's why i kind of choose uh, classical and contemporary music to to develop on but i of course play when i have time uh, like secondary job <laughs> some variety of music some folk music some yeah it's just again i think uh, music it's an international language it's a language which you can express just the style of music is just uh, a, not a different language but a different dialect so that's the only the only difference but i just prefer the classical dialect uh, that's why I, I improve or i spend more time and you cannot do everything, unfortunately. We have only 24 hours per day, so that's right. <laughs> that's very true. Uh, but, you know, I am, as a listener, um, understand uh, music in a way that I feel the music and I don't speak that language, so to say. And if it's a very sad um, part, then I feel that is a sad part. And if it's very lucky, you feel very yeah, exactly. lucky. And it's quite interesting to see the influence of music of our daily life. And, uh, yeah, and then when I go on stage, I want to say something, to express something. And uh, the difference between when I was 20 years and now I'm 25 and I'll be 30, it will be just my life experience. Of course, I develop myself, of course, I practice, but the most important is just what happens in your life. Maybe some sad moment, maybe a breakup, maybe change of country, maybe missed flight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so uh, everything you can express it in music. So more it happens in your life, more you can express. So that's the most important for me in the concerts, just to come and to say something to the public, not to play, I don't know, a clean passage or, or I don't know what else. No, I just, just take the music and I want to say, OK, with Bach, I want to say this. With, uh, I don't know, Schubert, I want to tell you that. With Liszt, I want to tell my craziness. With... So uh, it's just to express myself, not to play the notes which are written by Angus Korsh and to be like a Czech. Yeah. No, no, it's not about that. So you are giving tonight a concert here in Berlin. What do you expect and what can we expect from that concert? You can expect uh, very, a varied concert. Uh, where you can see almost all the styles, like from Baroque music to, let's say, Moldovian folk music. <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to kind of take from each, uh, each style, or let's say from classical period, from romantic period, from contemporary period, also from a bit of Balkan music, a bit of folk Moldovian music. So to be like, to discover accordion from all its, its perspectives, I think accordion is an instrument with almost unlimited possibilities. That's why I try to play as much as possible genres. So uh, you can expect a good concert, hopefully, tonight. And what do you expect? I expect a warm public. For me, it's very important. When I go on stage, I, on my way to the chair, to the, I feel immediately the, the vibe from the hall. And it, I know from that moment how it will be my concert. Even if I didn't practice, maybe even if I'm tired, even if I'm, I had problems in my life, no, in that moment, I feel the vibe from the hall and I expect a very good vibe from the people. So if I get that, I'll give also my 100%. Ah, that's good to know. <laughs>
talked in the beginning a little bit about your experience with Weltmeister, even if this was more than 10 years ago, but you started your career with one of our instruments. For us as um, the uh, factory where the Weltmeister uh, accordions are made, it's quite important to get some feedback. What can we do better for people using our instruments? So yeah. what do you recommend? So, uh, actually, I'm not so updated now about uh, your uh, production, to be honest. I was uh, very much inside my accordion for the last five, seven years. Like, for me, my accordion, it's uh, my, uh, I don't know how to say, my child, maybe. Maybe my, my biggest investment in my life. It's kind of an achievement for, for that. And uh, what I can recommend is just to, to keep going, keep... Uh, uh, to develop an instrument because I think accordion it's a really new instrument still it has less than 200 years so it's nothing for 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 the history and uh, when I see this in accordion world but okay we reached the, uh, the ideal instrument we have a perfect instrument say come on guys no it's not like that uh, we have to improve it day by day so just never stop develop this instrument because it it has a huge potential and I think in the future, maybe accordion will reach finally their like uh, biggest holes like on a daily basis. So that's what I wish.
you know, five years ago, um, I did reach out to uh, a couple of universities because I feel the exact same way. It's a very young instrument, um, but it didn't develop much in the past 30, 40 years. Mm. If you look back uh, 50, 60, 100 years ago, uh, it was different. The keys were made out of wood. Now it's wood right. and some plastic and so on and so forth. But real innovation and um, a better development of an accordion didn't take place. It was really hard to find universities willing to uh, work together with us because they thought all oh, this old kind of instrument that, hey, come on, there's nothing we can do about. Yeah. Now, since five years, we are working with a university in Leipzig and uh, we are in the middle of a project to reduce the weight because for young childs and for elderly people, it's really hard to have 12, 14, 16 kilograms in front of you and squeezing and um, yeah, you can do a lot. And I'm pretty sure that this kind of instrument will look much different in 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yeah, my, my biggest problem or my biggest problem, I'm, I'm from that 0.1% accordionist, which would like better sound and maybe more weight. So when you say about weight, I kind of don't care so much about that because once you have a very good position, but again, I'm 0.1%, so you have to develop instruments for 99.9% .9 of the people. But I'm that kind, for example, my instrument, I think, has 17, 18 kilos. So it's really, really heavy instrument. It's mechanics, it's voices, it's everything inside, it's huge. And uh, for me, always when I wanted to improve it, it was like, okay, but you'll have a heavier instrument. I don't care. Okay, but you have heavier keys. You will not be able to. I don't care. I need a better sound. I need a better compression. I need a better instrument. So I understand that that comes with more weight. But for me, again, 0.1% of accordionists. I don't care so much about that. I want just a better instrument which can do, again, to reach these unlimited possibilities. So please, when you have time, develop also something <laughs> for me. <laughs> uh, what does it mean, a better sound for you? For me, yeah. For me, an accordion is like... Uh, mm, I don't divide it in three parts. Like we do, of course we don't do, but a lot of people divide it in right hand, bellow and left hand. So for me, it's an organism. For me, it's a, a body taught like together. When I developed it, I saw so much that uh, if you have a problem in right hand, if you solve it in right hand, it will come the same problem in the left hand. So you kind of always have to think it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, better sound or better, it's, it's the power of a sound because I really squeeze a lot of recording and I really need as much as possible sound. Uh, for example, I change my bellows every six months. Just so you know, and uh, I, I try to take as much as possible. Also, I need a very good mechanic for that because I still, I'm still, let's say, not 100% happy about what I have now, but Still, I reach 95, maybe, what I want, but I still need this 5%, <laughs> which always are missing. Uh, better sound is, like for me, power. For me, power. For me, also, miss answer. And, of course, the quality of the sound, not just uh, usual old accordion, uh, this, you know, which old people will play this. I need also a very nice sound. I even don't know how to explain it. It's just the color. Of a sound, so it's it's from a lot of perspectives, but I understand that I have some special faults of that. So again, don't look so much on my side. I'm zero point one percent of accordionists. Maybe regarding the weight, I agree, but uh, with the rest of it, uh, I would say ninety nine percent are with you. The responsiveness of the accordion, the sound, the uh, the well hanging together. This is yeah. what what needs to be. Uh, we have to understand two things, but. If we need a good instrument, it has to be like really handmade. Handmade costs really a lot. So if we need a good instrument, we need to pay a lot. If we don't want to pay a lot, we will not get a really good instrument. So we cannot have, and we cannot have everything super powerful right hand or super powerful voices and also to answer on free pianos and, and also that and also that. No, it, we have to, to find our best. So this is the range which you can, we have to adapt here, there, here, and we cannot have everything. It's just a box, let's remember, it's not an orchestra. So uh, we have to adapt it to ourselves. And uh, you as a producer, you have to find uh, uh, what most people want, not the special people want, because there are only a few and they have to invest 
a lot for finding the their instrument, but 80% of them you have to just to supply for this 80-90% of people who want like, okay, we need good sound, we need good compression, we need a good instrument, which we don't have to repair every two, three months. That's very important. For example, myself, I also would like to not repair it every two months, but in the end, I don't care. Once I have, have what I need, I can go and repair it, or I can go and change the battle every six months. For me, it's not a problem. If I go on stage and I do everything what I feel, I do there. For me, that's the most important. You know, learners are looking up to you, and um, that's the reason why uh, uh, your ideas will be uh, resonate somehow with people playing the accordion, and uh, that's where the stage. <laughs> yeah, we have to get better. We have to get better. You participated very successful in the Klingenthal competition. That's the first time we recognized you. <laughs> and now we are here in, in Berlin and uh, we will uh, see a very nice concert, I'm pretty sure, tonight. Yes. What are your thoughts regarding the uh, news about the Klingenthal competition? Yeah, it's very sad, actually, because I was shocked when I saw uh, uh, when I saw the news, I was just very busy from that time and I didn't really have time to, to, to write to organizers just to show my, my support and to, to say we have to continue that. Because for me, always when I say it, uh, like in interviews or in uh, different shows, what's the hardest competition or what's the most important, I kind of always say it, Klingenthal, because it's, it's a hard competition and you feel the history of a competition. Also other competitions, big ones, have a big history, but I don't know, Klingenthal has something extra, some extra feeling. So for me, it's very sad that it, it was cancelled this year. I hope uh, next year I, I cannot imagine uh, the world without Klingenthal. So uh, even myself, if I could help anyhow, maybe with, a, I don't know, 
I, I would be very, very happy to, to, to be there and to help and to support this competition because I think it gives a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas, energy, change of experience there, a lot of good people meet there and Pligenthal is just a nice city, so why not to continue with? Okay, uh, we feel very similar that uh, Klingenthal is uh, part of the uh, uh, world of competitions and it started with Weltmeister or the factory of Weltmeister 60 years ago and uh, for us it's as well very sad to uh, see that this competition will not take place this year. Hopefully next year it will be different and yeah. if you and we work together we can help the sure. organization to uh, make it happen again. Absolutely. One more question. Uh, this concert today will be part of the Pantonale. Um, I'm pretty sure that a couple of our listeners never heard about Pantonale. Can you give us a little bit background and why you decided to be part of it and what's the relationship between you and uh, Waldemar and so on and so forth? Yeah, this festival, I know it from, I don't know, five more than five years ago. It's, um, it's a festival, I think, which does what we really need to play on big stages and like the closing concert it will be in Berlin Philharmonic this year I think on 24th of May so I will also play there besides today's concert uh, I this story with Valdemar is very funny actually he contacted me a few years ago and I was um, I was kind of busy we didn't really manage to, to, to get it together last year he contacted me again like I think 10 days before the concert in Philharmonic and he said to me like we need your help you need to learn like 25 minutes of music new in 10 days and to come to rehearsals and I was like <laughs> uh, I got some recommendations like okay it's only you who can do that in so short period luckily I was free that days I was not super free but I said okay this is a challenge and uh, I like challenges <laughs> so I said immediately yes and uh, I came after five, seven days in Berlin. We played, uh, it was a great concert, everything went really well. And this year again, he invited me, I'll play a new concert by Artem Nizhnik, a premiere. And uh, yeah, it, I'll play maybe also some solo stuff in Berlin Philharmonic. We, I don't say too much now. So uh, this festival, I think it's a really important festival. It's uh, just attend it if you are around in Berlin and I hope to see you there.
whenever you are around Klingenthal, we are more than happy to have you in our factory. Excellent. And uh, yes, we do everything by hand. We are not an industrial company. We are humans doing each piece of this kind of instrument, more than 3,000 pieces in one accordion. Yeah. And um, we are very happy that we can produce these accordions, that still people play accordion, and that we have people like you. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you and good luck with everything. I hope you can get uh, uh, this name uh, better, better and uh, higher and higher. I, I really hope that and I wish you a lot of success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Incredible concert indeed. The interview between Radu Ratoy and Mr. Meltke was simply captivating. A truly unforgettable performance. And many thanks to Radu Ratoy and Mr. Meltke for such an outstanding experience. As our show draws to a close tonight, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to all who joined us on this journey through Weltmeister Wednesday. For those eager to witness a live recording of the Pantanel in Berlin, head over to our YouTube channel. Mark your calendars for our next episode, which is on May 1st, where we'll be celebrating World Accordion Day, promising yet another spectacular show. Until we meet again, farewell. Thank you.